In the introductory video to this series, I repeatedly alluded to the fact that there is a normal range that the glucose level in the blood should be. This is very important, right? That the glucose level in the blood should be maintained within this normal range. So let's talk about this value. There are two types of glucose checks. One, you have the fasting blood sugar. Better put, fasting blood glucose. Because what we are actually measuring in the blood is the glucose. Don't forget, you're taking sugar it must have been broken down into glucose so it's actually the fasting blood glucose mm. the fasting blood glucose is the one you check when you are not taking in any food or water that should be very early in the morning say before 9 a.m if later than 9 a.m 10 a.m the body would have started to adjust in such a way that whatever you check may no longer represent a fasting blood glucose you should have said that one since now it will bless you <laughs> the other type is a random blood glucose which is whatever you check after the time i described for the fasting blood glucose that is any glucose you check when you are eating or when you are taking in water or anything later than 10 a.m or when you're on intravenous fluid iv fluids oh. yeah, okay. okay so the fasting blood glucose should be between 70 and 110 milligram per dl 70 and 110 milligram per dl emphasis on milligram per dl note that there are two units of blood glucose measurement what? you have the milligram per dl and you also have the millimole per liter so milligram per dl and millimole per liter i prefer the milligram per dl because it has less to do with decimals <laughs> you you no go fit blame me but if your glucometer that's the glucose meter which is a portable device that is used to check blood glucose we know if yours reads in millimole per liter all you have to do to convert it to milligram per dl is to multiply whatever value you get in millimole per liter by 18. wow so your glucose level in millimole per liter multiplied by 18 will give you the values in milligram per dl you get it okay so like i said the fasting glucose should be between 70 and 110 milligram per dl the random blood glucose level on the other hand should be between 140 to 180 milligram per dl 140 to 180 milligram per dl so we say an individual is diabetic when the fasting blood glucose is 126 milligram per dl or greater and when we check on two separate tests uh, is she speaking the truth? I don't know. I don't know. Here's the thing. We said the fasting blood glucose level is supposed to be 70 to 110. And we said that we make a diagnosis of diabetes when the fasting blood glucose level is greater than or equals to 126 milligram per day. So the question I'm sure you would ask is what happens between 110 and 126? Shut up everybody, listen. When the fasting blood glucose is between 110 and 126 mg per day, we call that pre-diabetes. Pre-diabetes. It is usually at this point that we prefer to detect diabetes. That is when it's still in the pre-diabetes state. When it's just about raising its head. No, no. <laughs> and this is very possible. It's very possible to detect diabetes at this phase, pre-diabetic phase. You know, because if you remember when I was talking about the types of diabetes, I, I said type 2 diabetes, which is a commoner one, the one you find more commonly in adults. It's developed slowly, or like type 1 diabetes, and can take weeks or months to even manifest. So for somebody who is in the habit of checking, you know, routine medical checkup, somebody who checks glucose regularly, it's something that you would be able to detect early enough before it raises its head. And this offers a lot of advantages. Uh, what do be that? One, it offers us better chances at managing the condition without medications and without insulin. You mean that? And two is that it ensures that complications are not already set in before we start dealing with the condition, which is the case with most people. Most people would have developed diabetes and it would have the glucose level would have been high in their blood for a long while before they even know. And so by then, some complications are already setting in. And so when we have such patients, that's not a time to start saying we want to try them on lifestyle modification or dietary adjustment. And we are usually forced to start them on medications. No this. No go work. How can you ensure that you detect diabetes early enough? By ensuring that you do routine or periodic glucose check. Once you're 40 years and upwards, you need to check your glucose level periodically. Or even if you are less than 40, but you have a risk factor 
for developing diabetes. For instance, if you're overweight or you're obese or you have a family history of diabetes, you need to also check your glucose level periodically, routinely, even if you are not up to 40 years old. I'll be saying more on this in a video that I'll release later about those who are at risk of developing diabetes. Consider yourself very lucky. Yes, I. Finally, you know, we have said that glucose level is a range and we have talked about when it is high. So when is it low? When so your glucose level is low when it is less than 70 mg per DL. 70 mg per DL. We call that hypoglycemia. Please, my grandma you did speak about a ragma. Hypo to mean low, glycemia to mean glucose. Hypo is also bad. And, and under certain conditions, a diabetic patient may experience a low blood sugar level. I'll talk more about this in another video that I titled Diabetes Shot the Iron Dog. Did you gain something from this video? Yes. Oh, yes. Then like and share this video. Have you subscribed to this YouTube channel? Oh. <laughs> then hit the subscribe button. I remain yours, Dr. Health Geek. Till I see you again in my next video, remember, your health comes first.